Hello everybody, my name is Shabon Hazi Fury from Mirror Shine Clap. I barely caught those. And today we are going to be doing some Huggly Buggly Funky stuff with gra uh, Gravity Due to uh, No, Acceleration Due to Gravity, not Gravity Due to Acceleration. By the way, there are only a few days left of Black History Month, so make sure to celebrate Black Scientists by going to this website. Alright, let's go. The guy was too lazy to do us uh, say acceleration due to gravity, so he just wrote G. How disappointing of you. Okay, so let me start off with a multiple choice question, just to keep things simple and easy. What is the Earth? A. It looks like this. B. It looks like this. Now I know that's not a perfect sphere, but pretend it's one. C. It looks like this. And yes, that is ex exaggerated. And D, it looks like this. I know there were some cube birthers out there doing this to be inclusive of you. Oh! Number one, A. That's how it looked like when I looked at that. Nope. Flat Earth is not correct. All right, now I have 33% of chances. D. Uh, nope. Cube Earth is also now not correct. Now I have 50-50 chances. B. Nope. Spherical Earth. Now I have 100% chances. I like 100% chances. C. Actually, you are wrong. The real answer was the secret. Hidden. E. The rubber ducky. <laughs> but, anyways, C is right. This is what's known as an obese sphere. However, since obese is not politically correct, we're going to say oblate instead. And not sphere, spheroid. So, this is what's known as an oblate spheroid because it's slightly fatter on the edges. So, let me give you a new diagram just so you can see what I mean. Give me that. Wipe, wipe, wipe. So, you give me extra credit for getting it right? I said C. That was trash. You took four tries to get it. And even then, you got it wrong because the answer was E. Spinning rubber ducky. Man, shameful. Okay. So, anyways, let's draw a little model of the Earth. Here is our Earth. And obviously, it doesn't look like this. But it's, uh, it kind of looks like this this actually but we're exaggerating it for your viewing experience so now the distance from the north pole all the way over to the south pole and then we have the distance of the equator or at least half the distance of the equator i guess so this is the equator and now let's just point out uh, some places obviously this is about the location of New York and this is about the location of Mount Everest might be actually slightly uh, closer uh, or below the equator but I'm not sure this is just an approximation all right so uh, now you see that we have four locations here uh, so we have the North Pole the equator and specifically Ecuador or anywhere else on the equator where people live, uh, Mount Everest, and uh, the oh wait, North Pole, NY, the uh, equator, and Mount Everest. Those are our four locations. So let's say one is NY, two is Ecuador, three is Mount Everest, and four is the North Pole. How would you rank them uh, from heaviest to lightest? So uh, I'm just going to draw a little bar over here. So we know this is heavy and this is light. Now I'm gonna give you five seconds to rank them. Only five. Five, four, pause the video for more time. Two, 
in one. Mount Everest, you feel happy. Anyways, all right. So let's begin. Actually, let me make my Everest more accurate because I think it's a little bit around here. And as you can see, it's actually pretty dang far from the center of the Earth. Anyways, uh, let's make a sort of kind of table. No, want to make like a upgraded tea table where you can have upgraded tea. So we've got our uh, location, I guess. Our hypothesis. And the truth, because the truth is powerful. So, uh, the first location is actually the North Pole. That's where you feel the heaviest. So, the North Pole is going to be... I thought you would feel cold. Cold is not the same as heavy, stupid man. I don't know why you're recording a physics video if you don't understand basic science. Okay. Second is actually NY, the Big Apple. And third is actually, unbelievably, the equator. Because we're not doing this from like the bottom of Mount Everest, just taking pictures of Mount Everest. We're doing this from the tip of Mount Everest. Since Mount Everest is the tallest mountain, that actually makes a slightly considerable difference, like a 0.01 meters per second square difference. So that means that the equator just slightly places right above Mount Everest. All right, so my hypothesis <coughs> these two are greater than 9.81, where, uh, where G is greater than 9.81, while over here, G is less than 9.81. All right, so uh, for the truth, we'll put the real G value that we calculate here. And you can check the calculation for yourself if you don't believe me. So first, let's derive an equation for gravitational acceleration. So let's take Newton's universal law of gravity and FG is actually MG. And with a little bit of intuitive thinking, you can realize these two are actually the same small m's. Why? Well, think about it. If you have an apple on the Earth, then its weight is not measured by the mass of the Earth or anything else. It's measured by the mass of the apple. And similarly, the m here represents the mass of the apple. These two should cancel out. g is equal to big G, big M, over r squared, where big M is the mass of the Earth. Okay, so let's see, uh, let's just plug into this equation. And these two are obviously constants. So G for G for yours? No, G is the gravitational constant, approximately equal to 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11th power. I thought G for George Bush. Uh, I don't know why that brought George Bush to your mind, but okay. Uh, all right, so we've got uh, 6.67 uh, times 10 to the minus 11, times 5.98, times 10 to the 24th. Divide that all by r squared. And now, here, I actually forgot to give you the distances. The distance from the North Pole to the center of the Earth is about, if I recall correctly, 6356072 meters. And the distance from the center of the Earth to the other side, no, we're not talking about Ecuador specifically here. The distance from this part of the Earth to this part of the Earth, or about one-fourth of the equator, is, I think, six, three, uh, let me get the black ink out of here. Six, three, seven, eight, one, three, seven, yeah. And the average distance from the center of the Earth, which is what we're going to be using here, is six three uh six seven one oh seven no oh six three seven one oh seven one there 
So, now, let's get all of that done with. So, we're doing the North Pole here, so first. So, we're going to go 6356072. And remember, these values are from, like, here, here. They're from the center of less Earth. Because that's where all of the gravitation and pull comes from. What is wrong with you? Sorry, I said one-fourth of the distance of the equator. That's kind of misleading. It's the distance from this part right all the way to the center of the Earth. So, now, we're dividing this by 6356072. And now, this is, uh, obviously, there's no calculating this without a calculator. But let me just spit out a magical result. Bip, boop, bop, beep, bip, boop, bop, beep, ah! I got it. 9.87 meters per second squared. And if you want to verify that, verify, verify that, check that on a calculator. 9.87 meters per second squared. So now, what about New York? Well, here, we really just have to substitute in a new value for the radius. So, our New York value, oh yeah, and we're using the same value for Mount Everest, is 6371071. And doing that, let me spit out a magical answer again that I totally didn't get from a calculator. Bip bop beep boop, bip bop beep boop, bip bop beep boop. And I got 9.84 meters per second squared. Well, then what kind of calculator is that? It's the calculator that I met, oh, sorry. It's my internal calculator. Totally. Because I'm like a phone with apps. I can do this uh, complicated stuff in just a few seconds. All right. What about the equator? 6378137. 6378137. Now let me spit out another magical answer that I definitely can do in my head. Beep, bop, bop, boop, beep, bop, 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 boop, beep, bop, bop, bop. I can't do this anymore. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's about 9.805 meters per second squared. Really at Marlon High School. Bit, bop, do you bop, use, yes. use calculator or are you still dancing? I started dancing uh, in the middle of my physics class. Like, bit, bop, bit, bop, bit, bop, bop, bop. And nobody asks you why you're doing <laughs> no, that. No, I'm just kidding. I obviously use a calculator because I'm not that dumb. I know what social life is. So this is about 9.805 meters per second squared, another value that I totally didn't memorize from the calculator. We're just going to denote that as 9.80 meters per second squared. But now, what happens when we plug in uh, Mount Everest? So for Mount Everest, since we're at the tippy top, we've got to take account for the 88.48 meters. So now that's 88.48 meters, essentially plus, because we don't really need to consider triangles. Uh, we have 6371071, and I'm just using the average value, because no one has time to figure out the distance from the tippy top of Mount Everest to the core of the Earth. So now, let's add those two together. And we get, obviously 9 for the first digit, we get 11 over here, 9. Uh, yeah, and that looks good. Actually, no, uh, 9919637. Yeah, I think that looks good. So, we've got, instead, 6379919 squared. So, now, let's deal with this. We've got, yep, and I totally didn't take this from a calculator. Sorry, had to do a different type of dance there because it was such a complicated calculation. I got bit. Sorry, nine point. 799 meters per second squared. When you take SAT, don't do that. Yeah, that's why, that's, I will, and that cal uh, no calculator allowed second. I can just go, okay. 
and you can see it's ever so slightly less than the gravity at the equator, which in 9.805, it's 9.799 meters per second squared. 9.79 meters per second squared. See if we can accept or reject. Anyway, now I have to calculate the difference between this and this. I'm just kidding. I'm not that dumb. It's G is greater than 9.81. It's approved. Uh, greater than 9.81. Approved. Gr uh, less than 9.81. Approved. Less than 9.81. Approved. So. That we've got it all today. Thank you everybody for watching. And don't forget to celebrate Black History Month. Uh, go to this website to celebrate what black scientists have contributed to our community.